Hello everyone, this is Teacher Lena and welcome back to my channel. Today I wanted to talk about some basic TPR movements so that when you're teaching in a classroom um, on an, in an ESL uh, company, you can know just some basic things and how to communicate with, the, with younger children because typically if you're teaching online you are teaching to younger children or to children. Um, so, or to anyone. So here's some basic steps for uh, communicating to people in the classroom. So first is, you know, basics. What is your name? So you introduce yourself. Hello, my name is, and I'll have, sometimes I'll use my name tag, Teacher Lena. My name is Teacher Lena. What's your name? Hmm? What? And then you put your hand to your ear so you can wait for them to know that that's their chance to say what their name is. But yeah, having this little name tag right here, making it however decorative as you want to do it, will let them know that they, you are asking for their name. And then oftentimes, not for adults, but oftentimes for children, you will ask, well, how old are you? Does that make any sense if they don't understand what you're saying? How old are you? No. So I oftentimes will use my cake. How old are you? How old? And everybody knows if you look at a birthday cake, it's like it's talking about how old you are. So um, this has three candles on it. I do have another one that has a question mark on the top of it. And that just lets them know like you're asking a question. Sometimes it will let them know. Um, how old are you? You know, and then they'll fill it in. Oh yeah, I am three years old. And they can practice saying that. So, um, and then if they can't come up with a number, then you can help them out. Are you five years old? Five? Six? <laughs> seven? Oh, seven years old. Okay, great. So, you know, that's a way to help them to remember those numbers because sometimes they don't know the numbers so that is that is one way and then after that you might say you know if you're if you have a picture on the screen if you're sharing it online you can start out very generally you know what do you see what do you see that's very typical but I was able to find my magnifying glass at the dollar store great place to find those uh, teacher uh, props but I love my magnifying glass. What do you see? No, you don't need it, but it just makes it so much more fun if you can have that as a dramatic effect. What do you see here? Hmm. Oh, I see. Uh, hmm. I see. Uh, and then I have, oftentimes you're talking about family members. I see. Uh, a family, right? So this is a good prop to have um, handy at your desk. I see a family, right? Yes, family. So that is another way you can um, help them to answer the question or if you just are holding something up, you know, you can, you can have it on the screen, but you can also hold something up and just say, ah, oh, what, what do you see? Hmm? What do you see? And then, oh, uh, dog. <laughs> dog, right? Dog. I see a dog, right? So that's a way to help them to uh, answer for an object that you might be holding up or on the screen. And if it's on the screen and they're seeing something, you can ask them to circle. This is going to be something that's very key for the children to do because they, for communicating online, you really need to identify things. So circling with their mouths is a good thing to teach them. So, oh, okay. So you see a dog. So circle, you can hold your mouse up so they know that you want them to use the mouse. Circle the dog. Circle dog. And they might not understand that. So you might have to get your whiteboard out and you might have to draw a circle on the whiteboard so they can understand that you want them to circle the dog. And then you can, again, try to use the mouse to circle the dog. 
circle. I know you don't need to understand this, but I'm just trying to get you to understand that sometimes it does take a long time for them to understand that concept of circle and you might not get them to understand circle the dog or circle whatever in that class. It might take them several classes before they understand how to circle. So I wouldn't get stuck on it, but you know, but if they, you know, I would try to work on it. I'm looking for my phone because that is a good trick to um, help them to understand because, you know, a lot of times the children are using iPads. So, you know, I have my phone right here. You can use an iPad to demonstrate, but you can say, oh, circle, you know, so they understand if it's a touch screen, circle, dog, circle. So you could do that with your phone or with your iPad to help them to understand that that's what you're supposed to do if they don't use a mouse. So circle, whatever it is, where, and then, you know, keep going, keep going on with that. Where is the, uh, the mom, you know, where, so hands up, where, where is mom? Where is mom? Hmm. And you pretend like you're looking, where is mom? and just look so confused, right? Being very dramatic. That's what TPR is, being very dramatic with your actions so they understand what it is you're trying to communicate. And they can circle mom, right? All right, good job. And then, you know, where is the, whatever, dad. You could keep going on with that. Um, but then, uh, if you want to have them to describe something that's on the screen, you can circle something and just ask them, well, what, what is this? After you circle, what is this? Just scratching your head, <laughs> pretending like you're thinking, giving them a chance to think. And if it doesn't come out, then you can say, dog? Yes, yes, all right, good, good. And then, you know, you could do the same thing with something else. Uh, what is this? And circle, you know, some ice cream on the screen. Hmm. Hmm. Is this, is this apple? <laughs> if you understand that they might be able to understand the difference, can make it a little bit more challenging. Is this an apple? No, it's not an apple. No, teacher. Oh, is this ice cream? Yes. All right. Good, good, good. And just going back and forth with that, but just trying to be as dramatic as possible to let them know that you are asking a question. What is this? What is this? You know, so those are some basic TPR things. Again, there are more like, you know, where is the small, the small G or where is the big G? You know, those are other ways to get very uh, dramatic with when you're talking about something, you know, or, or animals, you know, do you see the rabbit? Rabbit? Hmm? Rabbit? Where is the rabbit? You know, or where is the fox? Not that it really matters. I mean, they both have ears. How do you know which ears to use for different animals? But, you know, you could change it up a little bit, especially if they're in the same same lesson. You know, where is the, the, the pig? Where is the pig? You know, so just trying to use your body to explain these things to the children is very helpful. And those are just some simple ways for you to practice and to um, help you to get ready maybe for a test that you have to, um, to go through when you're trying to get signed on as a teacher. These are things that they're really looking for that you know how to do very well. So I would practice those things in the mirror so that you can know what you look like and you know, get comfortable with using these methods when you're uh, going for an interview or when you're just in the classroom and you need a little extra help. So I hope this was helpful and thanks for listening to me on my channel today. Please do just subscribe to my channel and I hope to see you again in the next video. Bye.